All right, this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you, coming at you from my beautiful backyard garden here in the, I guess it's about the winter time now, just about. And I have lots of really cool stuff growing, including uh, stinging nettles in this bed, plus lots of amazing spinach. Over here we got lots of lettuce, including lots of deep, rich, pigmented, uh, red colored lettuces, and some nice, like, almost purple ones. Here we have some of my uh, purple shiso I like so much, and behind me we have parsley, beets, and behind that we have lots of arugula. Actually, I'll have arugula salad tonight. And then over there we got lots of collard greens and kales and broccoli and all this kind of stuff. But we're not talking about gardening today. What I'm talking about today is actually uh, one of the biggest mistakes that you could make as a raw foodist that I see quite often. And whether you're a raw vegan, raw foodist, uh, a vegan, even a vegetarian, even a standard American diet eater, this is the one mistake I see the most out of everybody. Even if you're paleo, I mean, whatever diet style you have, this video will apply to you. So the one mistake, in my opinion, um, that I see the most often, and there can be many things you're doing incorrectly on any diet, right? Let's just get that straight. But this is the most important and critical one to me that I've seen over the last 22 years that people fail to act upon and fail to realize is such an important thing because many people that are teaching different diet and lifestyles don't focus on this either, unfortunately. I mean, there are some good teachers that focus on this and doctors, but most people don't focus on what I'm about to tell you guys. So um, most diets are focused around like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and your macro uh, nutrients, and the ratios. 80-10-10, I mean, that's a macro nutrient-based diet. On the 80-10-10 diet, you're supposed to have 80% carbohydrates, 10% protein, and 10% fat. But within that macronutrient number, there's really no great emphasis on the types of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins you should be eating. I mean, there is some of course, but basically just carb the F up is one of the things people like to say, or keep it carbed, keep it carbed. People want you to focus on these carbohydrate foods. And yes, carbohydrate foods are great, but the thing is not all carbohydrate foods are created equal. For example, you know, white bread or white rice is way different than eating something like uh, blueberries, you know, for example. The blueberries, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that the blueberries are much more nutrient dense and have a lot more different phytochemicals and phytonutrients than some white bleached bread, right? Or even some white rice that, you know, could be more nutrition. So I think that's a big problem. And even in raw foodists, you know, many raw foodists may not focus on what's I'm going to be talking about today, the micronutrients, right? The micronutrients are the most important nutrients that you should be concerned about on a daily basis. I mean, my goal every day is to focus my diet around micronutrients and worry about my macronutrients at the end of the day if I did not get all my macronutrients met by eating and focusing on my micronutrients first. Unfortunately, most people, even in raw food or vegan diets, focus on their macronutrients. I gotta shove all these calories in and they don't really think about or have a second thought about the micronutrients because not too many people talk about it, unfortunately. And I think that can be to your peril. Have you ever heard of somebody that's a raw foodist that gets cancer, right? I mean, it's these micronutrients that have all these anti-cancer properties. And if you're not eating cruciferous vegetables and onions and garlic in any large amounts, you may not be getting some of these micronutrients that are actually anti-cancer micronutrients. If you eat bananas and dates, you know, in my opinion, although I have seen no studies to this, you are more likely to get cancer than if you down, you know, two pounds of uh, cruciferous and other leafy green vegetables and garlic and onions on a regular basis, right? I mean, there is some documented science and studies to show that the foods that I'm recommending are anti-cancer foods. And yes, while d bananas and dates may have some anti-cancer benefits, it's definitely not as strong as eating the stuff that has been researched, all right? And not to say that bananas and dates are a bad food, but, you know, those foods tend to be high in calories and, uh, you know, lower in micronutrients. Not to say that they don't have any. Sure, they have plenty more than something like breads or, sh you know, uh, uh, cookies or other processed, even vegan foods, right? So I really want you guys to eat higher 
on the micronutrient scale. And so what are micronutrients, right? Micronutrients are things like vitamins and minerals, right? Antioxidants, phytochemicals, and phytonutrients. I would even consider fiber uh, a micronutrient, you know, right? Um, even things like pectin and, you know, essential fats, um, even things like, I said the minerals, but even things like, uh, oh, the prebiotics and the probiotics, right? Those, in my opinion, are also micronutrients that you should focus on and think about when you're planning your daily diet and when you're eating on a daily basis, right? Um, in today's world, we have caloric excess, right? Fast food, caloric excess. You get a lot of calories, very little micronutrients, right? And when you eat a lot of calories or empty calories with lots of calories with, with very little or no phytonutrients, you, your body cannot do what it needs to do, right? The phytonutrients in the cruciferous greens are anti-aging. They're anti-cancer. And there's so many benefits that are yet to be researched and discovered. And there are many, you know, that have already been discovered. And every different plant has a whole spectrum of different, what I like to call plant compounds, right? I'm sitting outside, the sun's beating on my tree collards. It, it absorbs the sun rays and inside the cell, inside the plant cells, you know, it's creating amino acids. It's creating protein. The only place in the world that protein is created is in the greens of plants. Animals don't make their protein. They eat it from the greens and the other plant foods they eat. So plants are really the answer for protein and have the highest levels along with the phytonutrients, but along with the protein that, that the plant's creating, it creates a lot of other different chemicals because all these amazing plants around me are literally chem chemical factories. And then when we eat the plants, we get the benefits of these chemicals. Now, the plant chemicals or phytochemicals are good chemicals, but man-made chemicals, in my opinion, that are trying to duplicate nature's made chemicals are bad chemicals, in my opinion, because we've evolved by eating plants in this world. And when man tries to like duplicate something and make it almost genetically perfect and all this stuff, our bodies unfortunately don't recognize it because it's like literally a Franken food or a new food. So I don't recommend any kind of GMOs or any kind of artificial vitamin supplements unless absolutely necessary, which in some cases that can be quite helpful. So uh, what we wanna do is we wanna focus on these different kinds of phytonutrients and think about on a daily basis, how can I get some of these phytonutrients into me, right? And there's certain doctors that I'll talk about in this uh, presentation today that I would recommend you guys look into that have certain ways you can get certain phytonutrients um, and that's great but I want you guys to try to encompass as many of these phytonutrients in your diet as you can. In this episode what I'll be going over is first um, how you might be deficient in some of these phytonutrients as somebody who's specifically a raw vegan. Um, some of these things are also going to translate if you're a vegan or vegetarian, you're in a standard diet eater. And uh, to kind of share my point, the next section of this episode, I'm going to actually share how you can actually increase the phytonutrients and some specific things you can do to increase your phytonutrient intake and also increase your health. So uh, anyways, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I wanna say is that if you are on a raw vegan diet, you're probably eating more micronutrients than most other kinds of people on different diets in the world. Uh, because hopefully on a raw vegan diet, you're focusing your diet around the fruits and vegetables, which tend to be the highest uh, micronutrient foods on the entire planet. I mean, there are some exceptions, certain diets such as uh, the nutritarian diet where you actually focus your diet around eating um, nutrient dense foods and phytonutrient dense foods, right? They may eat more phytonutrients, especially if you're on a raw food diet and you're not really paying attention to this. Um, I mean, standard American diets and even vegan diets eating high processed foods without the big influx of fruits and vegetables can also be deficient in micronutrients. And, you know, for some people that means taking a micronutrient supplement, whether that's a vitamin and mineral supplement and all these things. And I'm not really into that because that's not the best way to get our nutrients. The best way to get our nutrients, in my opinion, is uh, from our food, right? Our bodies have been designed to extract nutrients from food provided our bodies and digestive system are working properly. And so that is always my first goal is, hey, how can I get this nutrient from my food first? And if I'm not able to do that, then I'll maybe look into getting some kind of concentrated uh, powder or supplement or something like that. So now I'm gonna share with you guys about nine different scenarios if you're a raw foodist that you may be doing right now or you know, I want you guys to be aware of on how you may become micronutrient deficient, all right? 
And I'm not saying anybody d does this, I'm just saying these are just some of the things that I observed over the years and some of the ideas that I've come up with over the times, all right? So number one, if you're like on a 30 bananas a day diet, I mean, I love the 30 bananas a day diet. It gets people off the standard American diet, off junk food, and they're eating hopefully more fruits and vegetables. But basically people on that diet are really eating for calories because some of the people that started that diet, you know, just want people to carb the F up and eat high calorie food. And really they have no, they pay no attention to the micronutrients and this can be to their peril. This is why some people get erratic results on that diet aside from maybe overeating on there. But nonetheless, if you're just eating bananas and dates all day, those are very high calorie foods. And you mean if you're not eating the leafy greens and rotating, your diet, you are missing out on a lot of nutrients. Second way, you may be micronutrient deficient in a diet, and this could go with a raw foods diet or any diet for that matter, is if you're eating the same thing day in, day out. I know a lot of people get in habits and when you go to the grocery store, you always get the certain produce items. I have friends that go to the produce terminal and pretty much every time they get Roma tomatoes, oranges, lettuce, and cauliflower. And sometimes I'll mix it up with some dandelions or something like that. But basically every time they'll get the same exact items, right? And they never kind of, I mean, sometimes they'll get some seasonal stuff, but they always eat the same foods. And yes, as well, that, that's really great because those foods are better than most everything else people are eating. But you know, even better would be to find out what's on sale, get different kinds of things every day because we are creatures of habit. So it, it's important for me, for you guys to break out of this. I mean, for breakfast, somebody might have like a, uh, I know bananas for breakfast and then for lunch you could have a kale smoothie then for dinner you have a romaine salad and you do that every day because that's what you eat right <laughs> and that's what you like and hey that's great if you like it but i'm saying you know if you if you're doing that you know you're not getting nutrients that are in stinging nettles or in spinach or maybe even in microalgae like spirulina or chlorella right or barley grass you know whether that's fresh or dried or onions you, you know it, it could be really problematic. So I really want to encourage you guys not to, you know, eat the same foods day in, day out. Third way as a raw foodist, you could have challenges with uh, micronutrient intake is if you often eat out at raw food restaurants or maybe you just make high fat raw food recipes all the time or quite often, right? Most raw food restaurants I've ever visited, um, especially that I've been to lately, um, feature mostly foods that are higher calorie, with lower nutritional density, right? This is so that people feel satiated and full, right? Uh, things that are nut-based, you know, a lot of restaurants even add oil, which, you know, is sky high in calories and very low in micronutrients, right? Moving in a step in the better direction would be like, instead of eating olive oil, eat the olives, right? Those have lower calories, but aside from just the fat in the olive oil, they also have different, you know, polyphenols and sterols and stanols and fiber and all these other different antioxidants and, uh, minerals and vitamins and all this stuff in greater quantities than just simply the oil. And so when you eat higher uh, fat foods, right, that gives you a feeling of satiation sooner so that you have less room for some of the more nutrient dense, especially leafy green uh, vegetables, other vegetables, herbs, and fruits. Number four, you may be micronutrient deficient if your raw food diet is based around prepackaged raw foods. Once again, that's a similar situation as with eating at restaurants, most packaged raw food products uh, so that you keep buying them again, you know, taste good. And to make them taste good, there's three elements that make things taste good, uh, fat, sugar, and oil. And if you look into some of the ingredients of some of the packaged raw foods, I mean, literally it could be like, um, Kale is maybe the first ingredient because it's kale chips, but it could have like nuts, so that's a fat. It could have some sucanat or some kind of palm sugar, coconut sugar or agave in there. And it, of course, definitely it has some salt, so it tastes good so that you keep eating it and you're thinking you're eating healthy. And yes, while kale chips, in my opinion, are healthier than potato chips or something like that, hey, why don't just eat some fresh kale made with a, a dressing that you made yourself, right? That could be a lot healthier. And like Laura bars, you know, they're convenient, they're raw, you know, hey, they're just fruits and nuts. And hey, dried fruits and nuts are great in a pinch. But if you guys are eating them on a regular, consistent basis, once again, that's filling you up. It's giving you calories, but without a lot of micronutrients and some of the anti-cancer properties in some of the amazing leafy vegetables that you're not eating. Number five way you may become micronutrient deficient is if you're focusing your diet around and eat often, uh, you know, excessive amounts of dried fruits or nuts. I like to eat some dried fruits and nuts sometimes, 
but you should not do this in excess. You know, I have raw food friends that, you know, they'll just put a bag of nuts out and then just scoop them and chug them and, and eat just handfuls of nuts until the whole 16 ounce bag is gone. You know, I did that in the early years. I will not lie. I mean, when you eat nuts, they're good. They're satiating, they're filling. But once again, that's filling you up. And while nuts, yes, whole nuts definitely have lots of different nutrients, antioxidants and vitamins and minerals in there, right? Each nut is a little bit different. And by overeating nuts, once again, you're not gonna have room or desire as much some of the leafy greens that in my opinion are more important for you. Sixth way you may be deficient in micronutrients on a raw vegan diet is that you're literally just eating, your, you're eating food and you're not really paying attention uh, to and, and asking yourself, how am I gonna get certain nutrients on my diet? I mean, one of the things I ask myself is, John, how are you gonna get your vitamin B12? How are you gonna get your vitamin D? How are you gonna get your vitamin K2? How are you gonna get your uh, EPA and DHA, right? I mean, these are all very important nutrients, including other things. John, how are you gonna get your trace minerals? How are you gonna get your zinc, you know? You don't wanna become deficient in these different items um, because it can cause health problems, right? Um, I mean, iodine, if you, get, if you have an iodine deficiency, you could get a goiter, right? If you have other uh, mineral deficiencies or like vitamin C, you could get scurvy. But here's the thing, right? If you're deficient in a uh, mineral to the extent that you get a clinical uh, problem, like that could be diagnosed like a goiter or scurvy, right? That's a really big problem. You have a really big deficiency. But the problem is people are unaware of subclinical deficiencies, right? You could, you could be, you know, have enough iodine so that you don't get a goiter, but you might not have enough iodine to ensure your body is working properly, right? And doing all the different things it needs to do, you know? And so this is really important because these you may not be aware about unless you're getting tested. So, you know, um, most people just haphazardly just eat food and they don't really think about where am I going to get my nutrients from? And I see this happen a lot because most people are not teaching you guys to think about these things. So reason number seven, you may be micronutrient deficient on a raw vegan diet is that you just simply don't eat enough leafy greens. Leafy greens are the most micronutrient and nutrient dense foods on the entire planet they contain high amounts of these phytochemicals and phytonutrients and low amounts of calories. So aside from the leafy greens, I also love eating some herbs. I mean, not in great quantities, but I love having, you know, mint. Oh, mint in my smoothies is, is amazing. Um, oregano, I have lemongrass, I have, you know, uh, basil, uh, all different kinds of herbs that I like to include on a regular basis because these foods have amazing taste sensations. Oh, I can't forget about my shiso, um, but also different phytonutrients that I'm not getting from other plants. Because if you're literally leaving out certain leafy greens or certain foods, you're not gonna get the nutrients in those foods because certain plants only create certain plant metabolites or plant chemicals or phytochemicals. Right? So I want you guys to diversify your diet because most people simply um, don't eat enough leafy greens. And my goal is to eat two pounds of leafy greens. And in that two pounds, I do include you know, herbs. So if I eat like a big bowl of mint in my smoothie, I count that towards my two pounds. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't meet my two pound goal every day, especially if I'm home. It's the winter time like it is now and I have copious amounts of greens to eat. Easily I could do two pounds, but unfortunately not every time of year I have all these greens to eat. Um, you know, so I do the best I can, but usually I get in about a pound. Eighth reason why you may be deficient in micronutrients on a raw vegan diet is because you're buying most of your food at the grocery store. Whether that's a health food store or whether that's a standard grocery store, you may be getting gypped, literally, right? And there's so many different things going on in our world. And unfortunately, most people kind of gloss over these things. They think all fruits and vegetables are created equal and they're just really good for you. And if you eat them, you're gonna get everything you need, right? I've done extensive research and actually even visited farms and um, to see the growing practices of standard commercial agriculture, right? And to me, it's quite sad that standard commercial agriculture, that means when you're buying something at your grocery store, it's been through the standard commercial 
agriculture um, system and grown in at a big farm that's probably owned by a big corporation right it's not like some mom and pop organic farmer in most cases you know that's growing your food for you I mean after all they are in business to make a buck right so what they do you know it's not rocket science they cut corners they put the least amount of fertilizer on they use you know a specific uh, you know kinds of fertilizer if it's conventional food which conventional fruits and vegetables still way better than anything else at your grocery store so don't let me dissuade you or get you sad about I'm not eating that because it's just garbage no it's still better than anything else but I'm gonna share with you guys how you could even do better than you know just the stuff you could buy at the grocery store right so they're using like NPK fertilizer and they're not really paying attention or adding like different trace minerals to the soils they're growing in you know even organic food while organic food may be more nutritious than conventional food uh, based on my research in most cases but not always um, even uh, people growing organic may not be adding the proper nutrition and trace minerals into the uh, soil so that they're actually in the plants and the soils of this day and age are deficient in my opinion and based on my research and based on what I've seen we're losing organic matter at amazing rates and you know you could only mine minerals off the land before they disappear right if you grow a crop of spinach right I grow the crop, all the nutrients in my soil are going into the spinach. I could pull the spinach off, I eat it, I get the minerals. And then next season, actually, I remineralize and add more minerals of a wide spectrum of trace minerals, not just three, back into the soil. I mean, furthermore, growing with uh, standard conventional synthetic uh, fertilizers can imbalance the mineral balance, the natural mineral balance that should be in the food, all right? Because we humans think we're so smart, we've figured out that plants need a total of, I don't know, 16 or 18 different minerals. So farmers only give the plants those minerals, right? Oh yeah, we're geniuses, we figured it out. Like, I'm not a genius, I don't really know all this stuff, but all I know is that it makes sense to me that on Earth, there's 70, uh, you know, to up to 90 different trace minerals that are that can be found in soils and I want to put those back in my soils and let the plants figure out what they want to uptake I just don't want to limit them to three minerals which is what most farmers do and maybe up to 16 to 18 if they're really into it but that still leaves like you're missing like maybe 50 to 70 different minerals that's not going to be in the soil right and so like zinc they say oh yeah people that are vegan or raw vegan could be deficient in zinc or they could be deficient in boron right and those are minerals that are not being replaced under standard agriculture practices, right? And if you're eating all this plant food and it doesn't have the zinc in the soil, the plant's not gonna absorb it. And then when you eat the plant, you're not gonna get that either. So that could be a huge problem. Um, the other factor when you're buying just from the grocery store is that, especially if you're in New York, right? And the produce was grown in California, it was, uh, it was harvested. It was hydro cooled, it was packed, it was put on a truck, it was sent across the country four or five days in a truck, got to the distributor in New York, then it you know, went to your grocery store and you might be getting it a week, two, three, four weeks later, depending on the crop, right? When I travel, it's really sad that I try to buy leafy greens like, like spring mix or spinach, leafy greens, and I, I swear, man, like the day I get them, they're already going bad, right? Have you guys noticed that? It sucks and like you gotta like pick out all these bad leaves and it just really sucks, right? The farther you get away from California, the more I've seen this happen. And also, when you're picking out those box mixes, try to get one that has low moisture content in there. If you see all this condensation on the inside, steer clear because excess condensation causes excess rot. So that's a whole nother topic. But uh, nonetheless, as the produce travels and gets shipped to you, nutrients decline. I think they did a test on broccoli within a week, like 50% of certain phytonutrients were gone. They, you know, they basically... They, they evaporate well maybe not evaporate but they they uh, disappear right out of the food because a plant is still living it's still respirating and it's using some of these nutrients to survive you know before it gets eaten <laughs> so yeah those are some ways that you may not be getting all the micronutrients that you're expecting from the produce you're buying so what i do recommend and we'll talk about more about this later is you know try to support local farmers and farmers markets you know at least you're going to get your stuff a little bit fresher ask them if they add trace minerals of course also grow your own but that's a uh, part two so the ninth way you may be deficient in micronutrients on a raw vegan diet or vegan diet or any diet for that matter is that you have some genetic uh, predisposition right Gene testing, I mean, this is like advanced stuff. You probably haven't heard this before on too many other channels. But basically, 
every, we're all given genes from our parents and certain genes control certain things. Like cer there's certain genes for your eye color, right? <laughs> there's certain genes for what color your skin's gonna be, right? There's certain genes for all kinds of different things, right? And some of the new emerging research, you know, they find that people with certain genes, like the BRCA gene, may have higher levels of incidences of breast cancer, right? So that's somebody that may be already predisposed to breast cancer but you know my opinion is if you eat high nutrient foods you know you can beat your genes literally but you won't know unless you get a genetic testing to find out if you have that now that's just one instance that people may be familiar with but there are even other genes that show that you may have certain genes that you don't convert you know a beta carotene into vitamin a or there may be other genes that you don't you know, methylate vitamin B12 unless you get the proper form of it, right? And so you could be thinking you're doing good because you're taking a vitamin B12 supplement, but you're taking the wrong kind, so your vitamin B12s are low, and this can be to your peril, right? And so as genetic testing and all this stuff advances, we're learning more and more about these things. So I don't want you guys to be left in the, in, in the dirt, <laughs> left in the dust about this. I want you guys to have awareness so at least you know it's out there and you can get your genes tested if you want to. If you want to uh, give me a thumbs up, let me know in the comments. I'll actually uh, get an upcoming uh, gene test myself and show you guys the process and actually um, my results, you know, to show you guys what I may be uh, deficient in. Uh, so you guys could kind of learn more about it. So now I want to get into the tips so you guys could avoid some of the challenges with deficiency in different micronutrients, right? Some of these are easy, some of these are hard, but I want you guys to try to do as many of these as you guys can, um, you know, for the greatest health, right? And that's why I got into what I do now. I almost lost my life. So, you know, my research has been around, uh, you know, uh, having the highest level of health and having the strongest immune system. Also uh, being able to uh, live the longest and be in good health and have a high quality of life, right? That's very important, you know, I'm still flexible, I still run, I, I can still like do all these crazy things that I used to do when I was younger. <laughs> and I want you guys to have a, a nice good quality of life and, and you know, eating and making sure your micronutrient um, complete or more complete um, ensures you're gonna have a greater level of health, greater longevity, stronger immune system and probably even perform better in sports even. So uh, yeah, let's get into the tip. So tip number one, super simple, super easy. No matter what diet you guys are on, hopefully as a raw vegan or vegan, vegetarian, standard American diet, paleo eater, I want you guys to focus your diets around fresh produce. You know, fruits and vegetables, but even more specifically, leafy green vegetables, herbs, vegetables, and fruits. These are all very important and they're not all treated equal. And we'll talk about that in another one of my tips. But I want you guys to focus your diets around these foods. And in my opinion, uh, you know, 50 to 60% of your diet should be based around fruits and vegetables, you know. And the balance is going to be a little bit different between fruits and vegetables and all this stuff. And if you're younger, probably a little bit more fruit. If you're older, you definitely want to focus more on some of the leafy greens and some of the herbs that are more uh, medicinal and of a uh, lower calorie. Number two way you could be more micronutrient replete. Is that, is that like you're going to have more? <laughs> is um, I want you guys to rotate the foods you're eating, right? One of my games I like to play myself is, John, how can you eat something different today than what you ate yesterday, right? If I had jackfruit yesterday or rambi tans yesterday, today I'm going to eat persimmons or have cactus fruit juice, actually, like I did, right? Um, and then tomorrow I'm going to have something totally different, right? And so I want you guys to not eat the same thing day in, day out, and so every meal of every day, I try to eat something different than the day before. Sometimes if I have leftovers because I made too much the night before, sometimes I eat that the next day, but sometimes I might save it to the next, next day. So I'm not eating like two days in a row, but you know, I do the best I can. I'm not perfect, <laughs> but I do try to have a wide variety of foods. I mean, yeah, sometimes the, you know, berries in the store, fresh berries, I got some like uh, organic blackberries at Sam's Club. I think it was like 18 ounces for 5.98 or 6.98. I mean, that gets expensive. But you know, you don't have to eat blackberries every day. Hey, I like to have blackberries once a week, twice a week or something. And then I eat other fruits along in there. You know, I'm not, I'm not on a blackberry diet, right? <laughs> and I'm eating uh, highly pigmented uh, foods. But yeah, rotate your foods and especially the greens, right? 
and we'll talk about more later how you could get, guys could get like limited, unlimited varieties of greens. But some of the things I would encourage you guys to do is, you know, if you have good Asian stores around you, like here in town, we have nice good Asian stores and they have a lots of different leafy green vegetables that you will never see in a standard grocery store. And uh, some of these greens are quite amazing. But uh, if you are going to an Asian store and buying greens, uh, make sure you research what the green is first and make sure you can eat it raw. Uh, some of the greens in Asian stores must be cooked uh, before eating uh, due to some uh, toxins that will be neutralized uh, during the cooking. That being said, you know, even if you cook your stuff, you know, adding more cooked leafy greens, in my opinion, is definitely a good thing rather than a bad thing. Because if you, any way you could get more leafy greens and vegetables in is definitely good. That being said, you know, I just like to eat them raw myself. Third tip I want to give you guys as I sit here in my garden is I want to encourage you guys to grow a garden, right? If you guys grow a garden, right, you could actually add the minerals and the different nutrients in the soil so that your soil has... Uh, all the different uh, minerals, trace minerals, and cofactors, and bacteria and fungus like it should, so you could actually grow healthy, good tasting food, right? In addition, you know, you're not buying, you're not gonna pick your spinach and then put it in your fridge for a week and then eat it a week later. I like to just come out, like if I'm gonna eat spinach, I come out and pick a bunch of spinach, go inside, wash it, I spin dry it in my salad spinner and it goes right in my bowl and then it goes right in me. So I'm not like, it's not like 10 days or five days from the time I harvest it to the time I eat it. It's like right then and there. I mean, I could just pick this leaf right now, spinach, right? It's still alive and eat it. <laughs> So this way you guys are gonna get the maximum nutrition. So aside from getting the maximum nutrition by eating things quickly, um, another thing that's very important is adding the trace minerals. So I add up to 90 different trace minerals into my garden. I do rock dust, which adds up to 70 different trace minerals and I also do uh, sea solids uh, that can contain up to 90 different trace minerals uh, so that all my babies uh, can be fully mineralized. In addition, there's special mineral products that can help against certain conditions. You know, I have different mineral products that can help with uh, the heart, even with uh, being depressed, right? And actually, I think that's the last batch of minerals. I put these special minerals in. I'll put links down below to some videos about rock dust and uh, the special minerals I'm talking about, if you guys are into that. Uh, so that my plants could have higher boron levels and higher selenium levels and all these things so that I could get my minerals from my food and not have to buy a, a supplement so that I don't have to be so concerned about not getting certain different nutrients. Now, the last reason why that's very important to grow a garden is because literally you can grow things money cannot buy, right? I don't know anywhere locally that I could buy stinging nettles, right? Stinging nettles grow like a weed. They're very nutritious and you'll probably never be able to buy them in the store because they just don't sell them because they'll sting you. <laughs> also, farmers, they think they're a weed, but they're a very nutritious food. I mean, there's so many things in my garden, right? You can't just go to the store and buy tree collard, just a special variety of collard greens you know, granted, uh, the nutrients are probably similar to standard collard greens. I mean, shiso, you could find shiso if you look really hard, but the purple one's a lot more rare. And you might have endless amounts of shiso and seeds. In addition, actually down below here, I have wild dandelion uh, growing, not the standard chicory that's sold in the, in the health food store or the store. And in addition, I could actually harvest the roots of the dandelion and juice them like I did previously. I'll put a link down below to that video. But basically, when you grow a garden, you can grow unlimited varieties, and especially you can grow some of the crazy um, Asian vegetables that tend to be higher in nutrients that are more wild than standard domesticated vegetables that we're all used to eating. In addition, when you plant your garden, you can choose to grow certain vegetables, right? They have uh, spinaches, for example, that are lower in oxalates, if that's something that concerns you. You know, when you plant carrots, you don't have to plant the standard stupid orange carrots that everybody eats. You could plant the purple carrots that are at least 10 times more nutritious than the standard orange carrots. So the opportunities are endless when you grow a garden. And I can teach you guys how to do that. Super simple, super easy. I'll put a link down below to my gardening channel, over 1,300 episodes. Teach you guys all aspects on how you guys uh, become your own farmer. I also want to remind you guys too, real quick, um, if you don't have land or space to grow outside, if you guys could even grow inside, inside an apartment in New York City, an apartment in Chicago, wherever you guys live, you guys can grow sprouts and microgreens. And uh, the, the microgreens especially are four to 40 times more nutritious than my big spinach leaves that you guys are seeing here. Or, you know, the micro kales are more nutritious than kale. And that could be just be done on a standard shelf in a rack in your home. And it's not very difficult to do. And uh, furthermore, you could water those with a little bit of the C90 product or other sea solid product to uh, increase the trace minerals 
in your micros so that they taste amazing. So, you know, I don't want you guys to have a cop out. John, I can't grow anything. I live in an apartment. Yes, you can. Once again, check down below for some links to some videos on some microgreens um, that you guys could grow. Specifically, one episode with uh, my friend who actually grows sprouts and microgreens in his home. And I'll show you guys how he does it. You can do something similar. I'll put another link down below to actually a, a place in Baltimore that grows microgreens in like a room and makes like $100,000 a year. So that could even be a business opportunity for you guys. Fourth tip I want to share with you guys is I want you guys to be aware of the potential micronutrient deficiencies you may get on your diet, whatever that may be, whether it's a raw vegan diet, whether it's a vegan diet, any diet, right? I want you guys to be aware of the deficiencies. Some of the things that I'm more concerned about are things like vitamin B12, vitamin D, vitamin K2, you know, essential fatty acids, uh, probiotics, you know, are, are definitely important to me. But you know, uh, zinc and some of the other trace minerals, selenium could be quite important. But I want you guys to you know, have some awareness of some of the nutritional deficiencies you can or may come up with. And you could Google you know, deficiencies on a raw vegan diet. You, know, you may get some accurate things, some inaccurate things. But I want you guys to be aware of what people are saying. And then you could, you could figure out how you can actually meet those micronutrient deficiencies. You know, hey, to get selenium, I add a selenium fertilizer in my garden so my food will have selenium in it. I mean, it's as simple as that, right? Uh, for vitamin D, hey, I could be out on a nice sunny day or I could go to, you know, somewhere tropical and, and get a lot of sun, you know. You could get a light box, you know. You could go to a special kind of tanning that you could, you know, tan in and make your own vitamin D. Or you could take a vitamin D supplement, right? I always strive to get my nutrients from nature as, as best as I can, you know. Um, and that's a whole other topic unto itself. My K2, for example, I get from eating natto. Natto is probably the richest source of K2, even over and above animal products. And I know, I don't know too many raw vegans that I've met that eat natto aside from me, unless maybe you saw some of my previous videos, but it, I, either you love it or hate it. I love it. You know, I add it to all different kinds of food. So now I'm going to get my K2. You know, some people might think you, you, you could convert K1 to K2. And while that may happen and that may be great, right? I don't want to like gamble with my health. I just want to eat the food that'll give me the K2, right? And what you guys do is totally up to you, but at least be aware of this and have a plan or research some of the deficiencies you could get and have a plan on how you think you're going to get them and implement that plan and do that plan. You know, most people just take for granted, oh, I'm going to get all my nutrients by eating fruits and vegetables. No, it could happen. Yes, if you have a really nice, well-planned diet or it may not happen. So I want you guys to plan ahead. And so here's the thing. Once you plan ahead and implement your plan, however you're going to do it, then after you're doing it for a while, get tested, get a blood test, right? Um, I get different testing so that you could see if what you're doing is actually working. And if it is, great, you're doing a great job, man. I'll pat you on the back myself, right? But if you're not doing right and your blood tests show that you're deficient in certain different nutrients, right? Then you better come up with a different plan and change what you're doing so that you can get the different micronutrients. If you guys are interested in getting blood testing, um, I don't know if my friend is doing it right now, but he does do it when he's off hiatus because he's been a bit busy. I'll put a link down below to the video I did with my friend, Dr. Rick Dina, who does help raw vegans and vegans, vegetarians and standard American diet eaters with blood testing uh, when he doesn't have other um, pro projects that are uh, much more important to him or he has some time. So yeah, check out that video below. That's actually a wealth of knowledge in itself. So my fifth tip on being micronutrient replete is actually uh, selecting certain kinds of produce, right? Did you know that there are certain kinds of apples in the store that are more nutritious than other apples? You know, you just, you probably thought apples are apples, they're all the same nutrition. No, you know, depending on how the apple was grown, if it was organic or not organic, you know, how much sun hit the apple. So for example, in general, darker apples that had more sun, you know, basically when the sun hits the apple, the apple has to turn more red. So if it's more red, that means more sun hit the apple and the plant needed to make more antioxidants to or, and phytonutrients and phytochemicals to protect it from the sun. So, you know, if you're picking Fuji apples, try to pick the deepest, reddest ones instead of the ones that are kind of like yellowish. They might have been underneath the canopy and not getting as much sun, which means they're not going to be as nutritious. I mean, same thing with like lettuces, right? When you go to pick lettuce, like this lettuce bed here, I mean, you guys could see I have like, yeah, I have standard green lettuces, but I have a lots of different red lettuces and all the lettuces I'm growing for the most part um, are open head, so they're not like closed head. I'm not growing like iceberg lettuce, right? The more the sun can hit the plant, the more the uh, photosynthesis happens, the more the plant can produce nutrients for you guys to eat. 
And uh, furthermore, so yeah, get open head lettuce instead of closed. Uh, so like uh, instead of iceberg or like those romaine hearts, which, you know, they taste good, but they're not super nutritious, is get open head red lettuces. And uh, because they're a lot, or, or open head green lettuces even, but even better than the green lettuces is get the red lettuces because the red lettuces, these red lettuces actually make pigments known as anthocyanins. And these are like purple pigments. I actually have one uh, variety of red lettuce that's really deep red. It's almost like magenta. It's cool. I really love it. But uh, these lettuces are even more nutritious than the green open head lettuces, the red open head lettuces. So the color of your food could dramatically uh, increase the different nutrients i talked about earlier like selecting purple carrots instead of the orange carrots they can be hard to find uh, sometimes like places like whole foods sprouts and trader joe's will sell them um, in like a multi-pack so i try to go through all the different packs and find the one with like the most purple carrots i'll dig through the whole thing the produce guy probably hates me i try to leave them nice though when i'm done and you know i, I get ones that have like 70% purple carrots with 30% uh, of the non-purple carrots because I just want the purple ones, right? And so uh, selecting your produce carefully and selecting certain varieties of produce can really pay off. I mean, another thing that's really easy is when you're selecting uh, peaches or nectarines, right? Get the white ones. They're more phytonutrient rich than the orange ones. And that's probably because the skin on the white ones tend to be a little bit more red and most of the nutrition and the phytonutrients in the peach is actually in the skin. And so there's a really good book I recommend for you guys. It's called uh, Eating on the Wild Side. Although I do not recommend that book for some of the different recipes and some of the food preparation tips they give, I do recommend it for the varieties of produce they recommend, all right? Because I don't agree with the author on, on the diet they, are, they recommend in there or the preparation techniques, but I do recommend the foods. And so if you guys, I, I listen to it on the ebook, and I have it on my iPhone and I listen to it when I'm traveling. So like I'm almost memorized the whole thing and I keep listening to it over and over and there's so many different sections and hopefully you'll include more foods and different foods that you aren't including that you'll learn about in that book or the audio book or you could read the book if you want to. Or then if you guys are super cheap, you know, I'm super cheap, but I also want to get the information that'll save my life and make me healthier. So that's why I bought the book and the audiobook myself. Um, she does have a PDF. I'll link down below to the PDF directly so you guys could just find the specific varieties of produce you guys could buy that are actually more phytonutrient rich than other kinds, you know. So just doing that alone can greatly enhance your phytonutrient and uh, phytochemical intake. So I do want to mention that on eating on the wild side, uh, the author is focused simply on some of the different uh, phytonutrients and antioxidants in the food and may not be so concerned about the other different micronutrients that I'm talking about today. So please uh, keep that in mind. You know, some other things that I would want you guys to look into is uh, Dr. Furman's ANDI scoring system. It's A-N-D-I, stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index. I'll put a link down below to a PDF chart. And, but basically on his chart, basically all the leafy greens are highest. And as you go down lower, you get to like junk food and processed food. So I want you guys to eat high on the uh, ANDI scoring list, high on the uh, eating on the wild side list. And of course, um, Dr. Furman has his G-bombs. He wants you to eat every day. That'd also probably be a good thing uh, to do. And also like uh, Dr. Gregor has his like uh, Dr. Gregor's 12 things you should eat every day, right? So that might also be really good to look into because they've selected each of those foods for certain properties and uh, certain health benefits. Tip number six is I want you guys to eat foods rich in trace minerals. This is very important and in standard American diet or even on a raw vegan diet eating conventionally grown industrial raised produce, you're probably not getting all the trace minerals you need unless you're paying attention. So that's why I'm making this video so that you guys could pay more attention. I mean, one of the ways I get my minerals is by mineralizing my soil and growing my food. And that's why I'm so passionate about growing food and teaching people about growing food to have higher quality foods that I could get my nutrients from the plants like I should, right? And as much as I eat a lot of food out of my garden, all the food I eat is not currently being grown by me. I do buy food because I don't grow everything I need, you know, depending on the time of year I grow more or less. And so that always changes. Um, so grow your own is definitely the best way, in my opinion, to get more trace minerals in your diet. The second way that I also do on a regular basis is I want you encourage you guys to eat seaweeds, right? Um, seaweeds are from the ocean. The ocean has all the different minerals in there. 
And so I like to eat some seaweeds, you know, not any large volumes, but I have some every day. And I like have I like to have like mixed powdered seaweed is my favorite. Although I also eat, you know, full uh, sea vegetables that have been soaked in water, so they're soft. Whether I add that to a salad or whether I add have a sea vegetable salad. You know, it's always fun. So I'm gonna get the trace minerals from the sea vegetables. You know, especially things like iodine. If you're not really paying attention to your iodine, there's not, not a whole lot of, you know, land-based foods that have iodine. So that's why I like to have some uh, ocean-based foods. And I know a lot of you guys are like, John, what about the radiation and the pollution in the oceans? So, you know, my, my diet is not a sea vegetable-based diet. I, I might have a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons a day of sea vegetables once a week or once every few weeks, I have a sea vegetable salad, you know, my, my thing is in everything in life, there's pros and cons, right? You have to determine for yourself, you know, if the risk outweighs the reward, right? And in my opinion, you know, the trace minerals and the sea vegetables are far more important than maybe some radiation that's in there. That being said, you know, when I do buy sea vegetables, for the most part, I do check to make sure they have done radi radiation testing and they, and they say, and or they say that, you know, we don't have any radiation in there or it's grown in an area that doesn't have the the tidal drift or whatever right i mean like if you're super paranoid get stuff from iceland you know i think it's pretty clean maybe like new zealand and stuff like that but that stuff could get quite expensive and then finally if you're not going to grow your food or get the sea vegetables which in my opinion are, are a good source of minerals because once again it's in our food our bodies have been designed to extract the nutrients from the foods we're eating then i would go into something like uh, colloidal minerals or angstrom minerals which is basically a supplement at the health food store you know hopefully most colloidal products or angstrom mineral products are made from um, the best ones in my opinion are made from basically composted plant material from thousands of years ago so, you know, I have seen those types of products help many people. I'll, if I remember, I'll put a link down below to a video I did with Dr. Joel Wallach, who made a, a, a tape cassette many years ago, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and he's all into the trace minerals. You know, I prefer to get them from my food, but once again, if you're not getting from food, not getting from sea vegetables, go for the colloidal minerals, right? Um, we need to get these uh, minerals within us, and those are better ways than like a Centrum A to Z of zinc, which actually I don't recommend <laughs> those kinds of minerals myself. The seventh tip I want to share with you guys is I want you guys to focus when you when you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night. I want you guys to actively think about how am I going to get my micronutrients today? Don't think about how am I going to get my carbs? I'm going to carb the F up, right? That's that's the wrong idea because if you just want carbs, you can eat white potatoes, which are very low in phytonutrients. And yeah, while white potatoes are still healthier than probably cookies from the bakery, right? Um, they're not as good as say something like a uh, purple potatoes or purple sweet potatoes, right? That are more, much more nutrient dense. So by simply changing the, you know, produce item you're eating, which I actually, I talked about a little bit earlier about eating on the wild side. She goes into all the different varieties that are more nutritious than others and how you could just make little tweaks on what you're eating to drastically increase your micronutrient intake. I want you guys to focus on micronutrients first. So, you know, plan out your day like, hey, I'm going to eat all these foods because I'm going to meet my micronutrient needs. And this is where, you know, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen or the you know, uh, Dr. Furman's uh, G-bombs could ha maybe help you guys out a little bit um, to eat some of those items first and then worry about like getting your uh, calories. Now, I mean, you could just eat micronutrient rich foods and get all your calories. That'd be great, right? But hey, if you eat all your micronutrient rich foods and you have extra space at the end of the day and you want to have some white rice or some white potatoes because you love them, you enjoy them, great. The problem I see is most Americans eat high um, calorie foods and then they never eat their micronutrient rich foods. So I want you guys to really think about that, you know, on an ongoing basis, because, you know, what you think about and what you believe you will achieve. And if it's not in your consciousness, not in your mindset, you guys aren't going to do it. You're not going to pay attention. And then, you, you know, you may fall victim to uh, diseases of modern day eating because you're not getting and focusing on these very important micronutrients. So tip number eight, I want to share with you guys, and I do want, do want to give you guys a disclaimer that I do sell juicers for a living, and uh, I, will, I am, in this tip, recommending juicing to you, right? Juicing, by far, in my opinion, is the easiest way to drastically increase your micronutrients that you guys are getting into, right? I mean, I could sit here and eat a pound of carrots if I really wanted to, and I get all the nutrients from the carrots, and hopefully I'm chewing it into a mush to get optimal digestion out of those carrots, but more than likely, I'm not going to do that. I mean, yeah, if you cook food, you could cook your carrots and then you get them in you. But then when you're cooking, you're losing nutrients. 
but instead I'd rather juice the one pound of carrots and juicing one pound of carrots will get you eight ounces of juice. I could easily drink the eight ounces of juice and I'm getting all the soluble fiber in the carrot juice, which is approximately 50%. And then I'm basically composting the other um, uh, insoluble fiber that basically gets composted and then actually feeds all my plants <laughs> uh, the juice pulp, right? And so, you know, many, especially many people, if you don't like vegetables, right, juicing is an easy way to like take a bunch of kale and, you know, uh, spinach. And I mean, yesterday for dinner, I, I juiced, um, you know, a whole head of celery and I have celery salads. I'll chop celery fine and eat it all. But this way I, I juiced a whole head of celery that made about 16 ounces of juice. And then I blended that juice up with an avocado, some actually purple tomatoes, um, and some uh, lettuce, right? And that was my, my evening meal. Super simple, super easy. But literally I got the nutrients from one whole head of celery, including all the different electrolytes and trace minerals in the celery juice, right? And it's just simply amazing that I was able to do that. Cause if I just blended all that celery, I mean, it'd be number one, it'd be uh, too much volume for me to eat. Also, because most blenders run at a high speed, they're oxidizing the nutrients unless you have a vacuum blender, which I'll put a link down below. That's a whole nother topic. Um, but literally allows you to get a concentrated form of nutrients in you. And I, I personally believe that's a good thing, especially if it allows you to eat more of the, especially leafy green vegetables and other vegetables that you're not eating. So, uh, and then also, of course, rotate the different juices you're making. Every day I have a different kind of juice. I never know what I'm making till, till, till it is the next day. And I see what's in my fridge, see what's in my bountiful garden and I'm harvesting stuff and uh, juicing it on up for myself. So my ninth tip and final tip for you guys today, I mean, I could go on forever, but I had to stop it somewhere and I'm trying to just share my most important tips is I want you guys to get tested. This is very important, right? Test now, your, get, like get a standard blood test to find out if you're deficient in anything so you can make corrections, right? So many people just go in life without getting tested and they just think they're gonna be fine and then later they could have a health crisis, right? So if you get tested now, at least you could check for certain different nutrients and I try to do all these different tests all the time, whether that's a blood test, whether that's like a calcium test in my bones through like some scanner machine, or whether I'm getting an antioxidant test where they're beaming a light through my skin to find that I'm really high in antioxidants. I mean, I really love some of the diagnostic technology that is now available, um, you know, in this day and age, and we should be able to use that to uh, make our lives better, right? I mean, another test, that is really good to do would be the genetic testing like I talked about earlier just to find out if you're a non-methylator or methylator and if you have any kind of genetic deficiencies that may prevent you from absorbing certain nutrients in some of the plant foods so then you're going to have to adjust and modify what you're doing a little bit and that could be quite huge. So you guys just learned some ways that you may be deficient on a raw vegan diet in some of your micronutrients. And you've also heard some of my tips, my top tips on how you can become more micronutrient replete and get all your different micronutrients on your raw vegan or vegan or any kind of diet for that matter. And uh, the final tips I'd like to give you guys is, I know this can sound overwhelming and now you gotta do all these things, but I wanna say is how much is your health worth to you, right? I almost lost my life. I take my health seriously. I try to do everything in my power to increase my level of health because we all have a level of health and every day you can increase your health level or decrease it by the actions you take in your life. I mean, I guess it also could stay the same, but in general, people are just gonna move up or move down and that could just change by the food you just chose to eat, right? Whether you choose to eat white rice or whether you choose to eat like steamed, you know, or raw spinach salad for dinner, right? That could increase your health level. Some things will decrease your health level and some things will keep them the same. And I wanna encourage you guys to, you know, do things that will increase your health level always because we can also always make uh, changes and uh, differences any day that we wake up and we're alive, you can still make a difference in what you're doing and your health outcome uh, tomorrow. You know, I sell many juicers to people and lately I've been selling a lot of the pure juicers, which is a cold press juicer better than the Norwalk that the Gerson therapy recommends. And it's really, it makes me really sad when I talk to some of these people on the phone that, you know, they have active cancer. They're trying to battle and try to overcome and I wish them the best and I try to sell them the best juicer for them. But you know, that's, that, in my opinion, if you're doing that, it's, it's too late. The time to take action against cancer and other diseases is now before you get it so that you make yourself disease proof 
like Dr. Joel Furman says, right? And, you know, setting up your own program to eat healthy can be very difficult. You know, I've learned to do it over all these years. But if you guys want an easy way to do it, I would recommend Dr. Joel Furman's book and also his uh, informative website you guys could check out, um, drfurman.com. He has lots of free information on there that you actually you could, you know, use to increase and better your diet. And if you want to read a book about eating a nutrient dense diet, I mean that you could implement in a raw food fashion, but even if you don't, it still probably blows away most other diets out there, including some raw food diets in my opinion. Um, it's called The End of Dieting. I'll put a link down below to Dr. Joel Furman's book. In addition, if you wanna see more about Dr. Joel Furman, hey, I'll put a link down below to a few videos I did with uh, Dr. Joel Furman when he actually came to our very garden back here, and actually when I visited him at his garden uh, in New Jersey. It was definitely a fun time, fun experience. But yeah, of all the different uh, plant-based doctors out there, you know. I resonate most with uh, Dr. Joel Furman and his message because I think he's got his uh, stuff together for sure. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode today, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. That'll be sure, that'll uh, encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. I am a wealth of knowledge since I've been doing this for 22 years now. All kinds of tips and tricks that you actually probably won't hear on any, any other YouTube channel because I have some crazy ideas, kind of sometimes progressive and you know a lot different than what most people teach. But that's just simply I'm just sharing my life with you guys and what I've learned, hopefully to enrich your lives as well because that's one of the reasons why I believe I'm alive today to to help share the message of health so I'm really glad I'm here <laughs> also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes that are coming out of every five to seven days you never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel if you are already subscribed also be sure to click that little bell so you do get notified of my new videos that are coming out um, also be sure to check my past episodes my past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel dedicated to teach you guys all aspects on how to best eat a fruit and vegetable dominated plant-based raw diet also, be sure to share this video with somebody else, somebody that you love, somebody that you care about, so that they can learn more about some of the different micronutrients and some of the problems and why they may be deficient in micronutrients, but more importantly, how they could increase their micronutrient loads and uh, the micronutrients that they are getting in their diet. Also, be sure to check some of the links down below to the Eating on the Wild Side PDF, that's for free, as well as some of the different books and some of the other uh, videos that I've referenced in this episode today. So, uh, yeah, and also be sure to leave your comments. You know, what did you think of this video? You know, are you doing something that could maybe help me in my life? Put it down below. It could maybe help somebody else. You know, if you learned about a new superfood or something, you know, I try to always try to include more different superfoods, you know, in my diet. My diet is not a superfood based diet, but hey, I like some green powders and whatnot. Good to fill in to get some of those more, uh, you know, uh, different nutrients in me if I'm not eating them uh, actively or not growing them in my garden. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. Until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. High nutrient dense, baby. They're the best.